Before the beginning of each quarter, every Stanford student has to answer one ultimate existential question that will determine their happiness, sense of fulfillment, and self-worth over the next 10 weeks. Which courses should I take? And that's when Carta comes into the scene. Welcome to The Daily Brew from the Stanford Daily. I'm Ellie Wong, and today we'll be talking about Carta, a platform that many Stanford students use to choose classes. Carta is a, a platform that was designed specifically to help undergraduates at Stanford make more informed decisions about course choices. This is Professor Mitchell Stevens, the co-leader of Carta Lab at Stanford University. We hoped that Carta would make available information um, that the university holds in its systems, but uh, students don't have an easy way of accessing. And how it works is very simple. Let's say you want to look at the student reviews on CS106A, Introduction to Programming. You type in the name of the course and the result pops up. Click on the title and you see basically everything about the course. Course evaluation data, uh, submitted by students in the same courses in prior years, and then information that would be available from academic transcripts, specifically grades that prior students had earned, uh, and the sequence within which they took those courses. And this was the information that the university already had been storing for a long time. So Carta was built to take that institutional information that Stanford already had, aggregate it, and make it easily available to students so they would have uh, more information than they typically have when they're making academic decisions. The existence of CARTA is based on a fundamental premise, that more information helps people make better decisions. What CARTA does is to make that information accessible to every single student. I'm John Reinstra. I'm the student leader of the rewrite effort for CARTA. Uh, we call it Carta Pioneer or Carta V2. According to John Reinstra, platforms like Carta can correct the asymmetry of information prevalent in elite universities. People from all different backgrounds come to the school. Some people have an older sibling who's already at Stanford. Some people have three generations of parents that went to Stanford. Some people's parents have never gone to college at all. And so you have a very wide variation of people's backgrounds coming into the school. For these people, CARTA can be a powerful tool. There are some people who are really good at knowing which classes to choose. They ha Maybe they have friends, they have siblings, they have family members who can give them advice on this stuff. What CARTA does is it takes that information that the people with the most privilege, the most access to information have, and make it available to everyone. So what I really see CARTA as, in a way, is democratizing access to this information that helps everyone make the decisions that right now people are already making, but only the people who have privileged access to this information. And people at Stanford use CARTA all the time for various reasons. Um, well, I mean, as like a freshman, I guess like before coming here and like planning out the fall quarter was pretty useful because like it let, it let you see like, oh, like you're expected like you know, like how much hours per week that you were going to be putting on and like what other people have to say about the classes and it helped me make an educated decision. Like I, generally I've like tried to avoid the ones where people gave it 3.5 or something like that. Yeah, if it's like the overall ratings like pretty low then I probably wouldn't take it unless I have to. I've read course reviews where it just says like I need a certain level of Spanish in order to be able to understand even the material that's talked about in the class, which I think can be really, really beneficial because then you just have an idea of, okay, well, I won't even be able to access the information that's in the class. However, despite all these benefits you can get, some students have mixed views about CARTA. I think um, definitely having more information can interfere with you picking the right classes. This is Shreya. She's a freshman which means she's new to CARTA. First of all, your opinion can be swayed by the majority, but you might be very different from the majority, and so that might lead you to take a class that you might not enjoy. And this is where using CARTA gets tricky. The website provides you with aggregate statistics about the class, but the numbers are faceless. You don't know who got a B in that class or who spent 15 hours per week working on the assignments or you could be intimidated by the reviews on that class and then you don't pick the right class for you. 
here, Shreya raises an interesting point about the relationship between information and choice in online space. In 2013, researchers from Hebrew University, NYU, and MIT published an article about people's reliance on online rating system. They set up a news website where people were able to comment and debate on articles. Over the next five months, they collected over 100,000 comments, which were randomly distributed to the participants of the experiments. But before that, the researchers tweaked each comment a little bit. What they did was simple. For some comments, they gave an upvote. For some comments, they gave a downvote. The result reflected what the researchers called the social influence bias. Upvoted comments were 32% more likely to get another upvote than the control group. On the other hand, downvoted comments were 50% more likely to get another downvote than the control group. The research confirms our age-old wisdom. People love following the crowd. And rating system in online space reinforce this universal behavior. So what Shreya is getting at is, sometimes looking at what other people say about the course makes her less adventurous. Then what's the advantage of not using Carta? Yeah, it helps me be more a little bit more exploratory. I also think I go into each class with kind of a blank, like no opinion on the class, just like wanting to take that class. From there, I can see how that class shapes up to be. And so I have no bias going into a class, which I guess can be good and can be bad. Having no information at all, of course, leads you into unexpected consequences. And that's the cost of freedom. But having too much information also has some consequences. And what we found is that first-year students new to Stanford who had easy access to the grade distribution information ended up having modestly but significantly lower overall grade point averages during the first two quarters of their time at Stanford. But why does this happen? Students um, work very hard academically to become eligible for admission to Stanford. They're highly accomplished students. Um, They expect and anticipate that college will be challenging. They get on CARTA, they see that the modal grade in many courses is an A minus, and they take that as a signal that the course will be easier than in fact it actually is. In other words, students don't try as hard when they think they have a high chance of getting an A. But the problem is, most of the students who sign up to that class think the same. It's like if you're using GPS on your phone, and it gives you the fastest route. But it also gives the same route to hundreds of other drivers. Everyone ends up on the same road, and you are 20 minutes late to your date. And many students understand this problem very well. Um, I usually try and get a couple different opinions, but I find that when I can ask them my specific questions about the class, that's more helpful than just a general, I liked it, I didn't like it. I feel like if you're like focusing on the grades when you're choosing your classes, then it's probably like you were already probably going to do worse in the class if like that was your reasoning for picking the class. Is that like you were trying to like do a class with a bunch of A's or whatever? I mean, I would first look at how similar I am to my friend, how um, similar our learning styles is, how similar our interests is. And based on how similar we think about, or how similar we think and how our learning styles are, I would trust a friend if, uh, more than Carta, if we think very similarly, but that's probably not gonna happen. So I would, in most cases, trust Carta more than the friend. In 2019, we are living in a world where the abundance of information makes it hard to decide on anything, especially when it comes to education. We are obsessed with making the right choices because the cost of a wrong choice is so high. If, if one thinks of 12 academic quarters at Stanford as high value real estate, that students and their families have invested a great deal in getting access to. Then the choices made in each of those academic quarters takes on a fatefulness at this moment in history than that it didn't have in a time when tuition was much lower 
when um, admissions rates to Stanford were much higher, and when anxieties about earning potential were um, were less intense. And so, uh, in that in that way, I think students and their families do have a sense of. Um, high stakes and trade-offs when they're making academic decisions. Because of that, students feel higher pressure to optimize their four years at university, as if they are creating a portfolio that can guarantee the highest return from their investment, commoditizing their college experience. Yesterday, the presumption was uh, everything at this institution is equally excellent. It doesn't matter which choice you make, and uh, trust us, we're in charge. And uh, today, there is a, a, a sense among consumers of a wide range of services that they should be able to have more information about the options that are available to them. Once we look at the university education from this perspective, we can see how CARTA might influence not only the students, but also teachers. And according to John, this can actually happen. The thing is, CARTA has become the central platform that everyone looks to almost as if like Carta is the profile for your class. Like the public presence of your class is your Carta page. And I think the fact that teachers have no control over what their Carta page says uh, causes um, angst and anxiety uh, among some teachers. That's something that maybe we can change, uh, especially with the rewrite. But John is an optimist. He doesn't think Carta would cause more harm than good. Now that there's more transparency professors realize that students want certain things and and they're actually able to see that in your class and they're responding to better address what students want and i think that's good for students carta makes your exploration at university much safer the exchange of information between students and professors also can improve overall quality of the service provided by universities carta is like a map for students' intellectual journey at Stanford. But this makes me wonder, should the liberal education have a map that tells you where you can find the Holy Grail? And how does Carta fit into our romantic vision of liberal education, like the one deeply rooted in the motto of Stanford University? I hereby formally inaugurate you, Gerhard Casper, as president. Stanford's first president, David Starr Jordan, chose Die Luft der Freiheit weht, the wind of freedom blows, as the informal motto. Liberal arts colleges and universities in the United States celebrate the idea that um, we want students to come here and then expose themselves to a wide range of choices, find their passions and talents. Um, and then commit after a period of time to a particular field of study. We have a large faith in that process, but there are some large uh, problems that that faith often fails to address. It is arguably the case that sort of too much choice or too anarchic a choice environment might lead to dead ends, cul-de-sacs, um, uh, lost money, lost time. I, I think there are some sort of Stanford sort of versions of the problem of choice that, that Carter research could um, uh, help us understand better. Carter Lab plans to build a national community around the study of academic decision-making by making the platform available to other universities. Would Carter bring the wind of academic freedom to those places? We'll have to wait and see. Of audio bites of you maybe reading out and reacting to a couple of books sure. on your classes. Sure. Um, okay, <laughs> that's fine. Um, excellent and very practical course. However, if you're looking to deep dive into rich analysis and understanding of the types of qualitative methods, this course might not satiate that desire. You might be left feeling like you need to take another qualitative methods course before you'd be ready to collect and analyze data yourself. I don't know, they all love me. Maybe this isn't going to work. <laughs> you can read the nice one. Oh. Too. Uh, you get out of it what you put into it. This episode was produced by Wonky Jung, Smitty Matal, Chloe Burrow, and Rachel Koo. To hear from other Stanford Daily podcasts, go to stanforddaily.com slash podcasts.